Vancouver is a very young city. It was incorporated in 1886. Vancouver, a hidden gem for many people, a cultural hotpot between the Asian First Nation and Western world, a place dominated by its rich cuisine and exotic influences. 40% of the general population are actually made up of immigrants. The city is located between mountains and the Pacific Ocean. The climate all year round is quite mild, with temperatures rarely going below 5 degrees Celsius in the wintertime. In the summer you can enjoy a warm, dry climate while relaxing by one of the many beaches or lakes located in and around Vancouver. A fact that surprises many people is that Vancouver has the second largest film industry in North America. Other dominating industries are in the real estate and upcoming tech industry. Many studios such as Netflix, Amazon and Disney are expanding their footprint locally. Amazon is also currently building a new HQ in the heart of downtown. This is why many people call Van North Hollywood because of its importance in the industry. The local architecture is a playground for visionary architects who design futuristic and forward-thinking projects. Not only do those projects look good, but also consider their local environmental impact. Nonetheless, it is also possible to find older buildings that are around 80 to 120 years old that are protected by the government as heritage homes. Van is home of the fourth largest cruise ship terminal in the world. Most ships departing from our terminal are headed to Alaska. Brrr. The port of Van is the largest in Canada and the third largest in North America in terms of tonnage moved around. Another useless fact is that the popular plastic surgery procedure Botox was actually invented here. Locals love to go snowboarding, skiing, cross-country skiing or snowboarding in the wintertime. The closest mountain, Grouse Mountain, which we'll be covering in the later episode, is only 15 to 20 minutes away by car from downtown Vancouver. Another very popular activity all year round is hiking. There are thousands of different hiking trails around Vancouver that are simply astonishing. I personally love this place and I simply think it's fascinating. I'm also certain that because of the city's fast and healthy growth, that Vancouver will be on everyone's map in the near future. Hello YouTube and welcome to my new channel, Around the World. This is a travel channel where I'm going to be exploring different cities around the world. I'm going to start with the city where I live in myself, which is Vancouver in Canada, BC. Um, so the entire concept of the channel is that I basically researched the seven most Googled points, uh, locations, uh, uh, you, know, what, 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 you know, what people Google for. I'm going to research them, I'm going to film them, uh, and I'm going to do a three-part series about it. And uh, right now you're, you're watching the first part. I'm going to be doing different cities after this, uh, such as Victoria, Kelowna, uh, you know, cities in Alberta, Toronto and so on. I'm probably going to be covering Canada first and then move into uh, Seattle, LA, Portland, all these other cities. Um, but yeah, all the footage is filmed by myself. Uh, I, I, I kind of took a different approach because uh, I wanted to be uh, a, a travel channel that concentrates more actually on the images that I filmed uh, than just showing just showing my face talking like everyone else. This actually took me a lot of time and a, little, a lot of effort so I hope that you guys really enjoy this video. Without further ado let's kick it off with the first most Google topic Stanley Park. Stanley Park is one of Vancouver's favorite spots to hang out on a sunny day or to perform some sort of workout. The park itself is 4,049 square kilometers big. The park is one-fifth larger than Central Park in New York City and almost half the size of Richmond Park in London, UK, which is roughly 10,000 square meters big. Shout out to my brother and sister who live there. No, not in the park, in London. The park itself was named after Governor General Stanley. Can you guys guess what else was not named after him? Bam, you're wrong. The Stanley Cup. The park is home to a boccia field, shout out to my dad, several tennis courts and a mini golf course and for the big boys of course, a full size 12 yard 18 hole par 54 golf course. The 11 free tennis courts are located near the Beach Avenue entrance to Stanley Park. Use the courts on a first come first serve basis with a 30 minute limit on play if someone is waiting because we're considerate people. Furthermore, the prime location features fun stuff for kids too, with four available playgrounds, pool and splash courses for kids and their struggling parents to enjoy. In case your hunger and or thirst kick in, 
because you just had too much fun to bear, you can visit any of the five popular dining and drinking locations. One of them which is featured in this video called the Tea House. The park also features multiple beaches that are quite popular amongst the locals, especially teenagers that want to hook up romantically at night by the beach with their flame. The most popular beaches are called First, Second and Third Beach, and now very smart, with the Second and Third Beach being the bigger and most popular ones, especially during the hot summer. The beaches feature an open ocean view experience, even though it isn't at all an open ocean. The beaches are actually naturally sandy. However, the views are just spectacular and I strongly advise anyone visiting Vancouver to check them out. Walking around the park also allows breathtaking views of the Lions Gate Bridge and West and North Vancouver. The famous suspension bridge is 1823 meters long, 111 meters high and 473 meters long. It was completed by the year 1938 and it was first officially known as the First Narrows Bridge. Lions Gate connects west and north Vancouver to downtown and southern parts of Vancouver. The, the traffic on the bridge is approximately 60,000 to 70,000 vehicles per day. And as you can probably imagine, during special occasions such as New Year's, the bridge should be avoided at all times. There is also a second bridge in north Vancouver leading to Burnaby in case there's too much traffic. Hence, people aren't as trapped as you might think. The Brockton Point Lighthouse and the Lagoon was designed by the same person called Thomas Mawson in 1916 but was first established however in 1819. It is 105 meters high and features a special color scheme of red and white stripes. The 9 o'clock gun is a cannon still firing today every day at 9 p.m. The gun was cast 200 years ago in England. Yes, Canada is Commonwealth. Firing used to be a time signal for close ships and the general population to set their time accurately. So I could imagine that the old my watch was running behind trick won't work or didn't work. The park also features a collection of First Nations totem poles, art and sculptures by the Coast Salish people that were quite advanced in their design and architecture. The nine totem poles located on the Brockton Point in Stanley Park are the most visited spot in the entire park. The collection started at Lumberman's Arch in the 1920s when the park board bought four totems from Vancouver Island's Alert Bay. More purchased totems came from Haida Gwaii, Queen Charlotte Island and the BC Central Coast River Inlet to celebrate the 1936 Golden Jubilee. In the mid-1960s, the totem poles were moved to the attractive and accessible Brockton Point. The Siwash Rock, also known by its Squamish name Scouch, or something that I can't pronounce, is a famous rock outcropping off the coast of Stanley Park. The rock is a symbol of the park and legendary myth that surrounds it. Some people refer to it as the Nine Pin because of its distinctive shape and resemblance of a bowling pin. Stanley Park also features the famous lagoon, again, which was designed by the same guy that designed the lighthouse. The Lost Lagoon is an artificial miniature lake that contains 16.6 .6 hectare of water mass. There's also a popular trail along the lake which is 1.75 kilometers long. Another artificial lake called the Beaver Lake is a hidden gem in the park. It is slightly harder to find simply because it is located more inwards, whereas the Lost Lagoon borders right by the west end part of downtown. Another popular attraction is the horse-drawn carriage tours. A horse-drawn carriage ride through Stanley Park offers a different and quite vintage way to explore the beauty of the 1,001-acre park. The second most Google topic is actually located in Stanley Park, but it deserved its own chapter, which is Vancouver's aquarium. 
because it's so meaningful and it is actually itself one of the top Googled locations in Vancouver. The Vancouver Aquarium is a huge attraction in the city. Pre-COVID, of course, because now it is shut, unfortunately. It contained around 58,000 animals. The attraction was founded in 1951 and is thus almost 70 years old to date. The tubs contain a total of 9.5 million liters, which is 2.5 million US gallons of water. The aquarium itself is internationally recognized for its variety and size. Another interesting fact is that the aquarium was Canada's first public one. I personally unfortunately have never been and now I can't even check it out because of COVID. So I can't confirm if it's as awesome as people say. However, fish are weird and sensational, so you just can't go wrong by popping in. The third chapter of part one of my little series is about Canada Place, which is a very important monument, but more to that in my next clip. Canada Place was actually opened by the legendary Princess Diana, Prince Charles and Brian Mornery in 1986 themselves. Every year 1 million tourists flock to this destination. Not only is the structure in my opinion remarkable and very well built, but the views are simply breathtaking. You can view the entire coastline of Cole Harbour, North Vancouver, parts of West Vancouver, Gastown and all the way down to Burnaby on a good day and depending on your viewpoint, of course. Another interesting fact is that every day at noon, 10 heritage horns play the first four notes of O Canada. Canada Place also features popular attractions like Flyover Canada. Flyover Canada utilizes state-of-the-art technology to give you the feeling of flight. You will hang suspended, feet dangling before a 20 meter spherical screen while the film whisks you away on an exhilarating 8 minute journey across Canada from east to west. Special effects including wind, mist and scents combine with the right motion to create an unforgettable experience. Canada Place is located in the heart of downtown, right next to Gastown and very close to the Needle that is also a very popular restaurant in Vancouver. Vancouver's main station is also around five minutes walking distance from Canada Place itself. This popular location is also surrounded by many popular and famous restaurants. Canada Place is also located right on the north facing seawall. Therefore, if you ever come to check this location out, I highly suggest you walk along the entire seawall to take all its beauty in. Highly recommend it guys. And here only for you guys exclusively a video of me riding my Segway 9 bob through Stanley Park without hurting myself. This unfortunately ladies and gentlemen we came to the end of part one of my video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Please always like and subscribe because that's the only way that I can ever earn money with this channel especially if I have to travel further distances. It will have to come out of my own pocket at this point, which I really don't want. So please subscribe and like. Thank you for watching.